Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode six of our level one advanced beginner ballet from my living room to yours, care of Canada's National Ballet School. For those of you who've not tuned in before or not met me in person, my name is Ian Parsons, and it is my great privilege to be a member of the artistic staff at Canada's National Ballet School. So if you're joining us for the first time, I strongly urge you to check out episodes one, two, three, four, and five, because every week, a little bit, just a little bit, builds on the week before. So if, if you've been with us from episode one, I hope you've enjoyed the journey so far. I know that I definitely have. And if you're here for the first time, I really hope that you enjoy experiencing just a little bit of the fantastic beauty of dance and of ballet in your own home, in your kitchen, living room, wherever you might be. Speaking of kitchen, living room, and wherever you might be, make sure you have enough space. Yes, I know I've been teaching a few live online classes this week, and there have been a couple of moments where that lamp there has become very dangerously turned into junk. Yes, so really make sure that you give yourself enough space and that your floor is right in that Goldilocks zone of just right, not too slippery and not too sticky. The beautiful music we will be dancing to today, as always, is by the phenomenal Rob Thaller. Uh, we've actually not had to repeat any of Rob's tracks thus far since episode one because he has so much fantastic music for ballet classes on Apple Music and Spotify. So please, please, please check him out there. And with all that out of the way, we're ready to get down to business. So I know I said last week that I was really hoping that by this week I would be wearing my t-shirts. Unfortunately, if you're in Toronto, you've noticed that the weather has not been kind to us. This weekend's a little bit better, but unfortunately it's been a little bit too cool. I haven't had the guts to put the turtlenecks away yet. So, starting with our warm-up exercise, the same as the past two weeks, this will be the last week that we do this warm-up, just for the sake of time. So, starting in first position, facing the bar, we go five, breathe, six, seven, and a eight, and a tendu to the front, and a flex, flex, point a five, six, and plie, close on plie, stretch. Same thing, side, a two, and a flex, a flex and point, five, and six, and a plie, plie, stretch. To the back, a two, and a flex, a four, really work through all the joints of that foot. Now notice my head stays on the same level. And eight, little circle, put your right hand on your sternum, forward, two, all the way around, three, four, nice easy circle, six, seven, and eight, and then we go to the other side. Slow tone to front, flex and flex, point and point, plie, plie, stretch. Same thing to the side. And we finish. Slow tone to front.
to the back. Towards the left. Plies. Starting in first position, we go five, breathe six, and seven, arm to second. Four count demi plie. One and two, coming up three and four, rising five, over your second toe on a plie and demi point seven, and breathe, grand plie. One, and two, and a three, and four, tendu a la seconde, five, and six, lowering, seven, same thing in second, long plie, one, and two, coming up, and four, rising, five, plie on demi point, six, and keep your heels high, Lower, grand plie, one, and two, and a three, and a four, and we tendu five, and six, close fifth front, seven, and eight. Now, from here, it's exactly the same. One and a two, three and a four. Keep your feet where they are, so don't pull them together. Five, plie six, seven, Lower, I'm going to take the plunge today. Grand plie. One, and two, and a three, and four. Tendu side one more time. Six, and we'll go to first today for our port of rock. Eight, breathe. One, and two, hold three, and a four. Coming up, five. And six, arm to third, seven, and turn your head. Come right back with the arm in third, up and back. One, and two, recover three, and four, open five, six, take a breath, seven, and eight, to finish. Long day plie. Right in the middle of that foot, not to the front or the back. Tendu to second. Same thing in second. Remember, the way up is where it should be harder. Grand plie. Tendu again. Closing fifth front. Demi. exercise for this week. So the first thing being the grand plie in fifth position. So we've been doing just a very long demi plie up until now, but now we're adding the grand plie. And the exact same logic applies 
in first and second as it does in fifth position. However, I find sometimes what happens in fifth position, I'll go sideways just so you can see, is that it's much easier for us to start folding back in our hips a little bit. So if you just take, I'll show you without holding onto the bar, but you could do this one hand at a time. If you sort of take a hand and just put it on the other side of your hip, you want to make sure you feel that your hips don't retract away from your hands. So as I go down, I feel them stay in exactly the same place without letting my tailbone go out the back door. And the second thing is this combray back with the arm in third. So what you want to be aware of is that you almost want to feel like your head is on a pillow when you go to the back. For some reason, when we have our arm back, it becomes very easy to sort of give it a little bit legend of Sleepy Hollow, and then it's like you've been decapitated. Yes, so if I look here, I look towards you, hopefully you can see this eye. So my eye, that my left eye in my case, the one that's furthest away from you. So as I go up and back, my arm and head stay in exactly the same relationship with each other. I don't sort of do peekaboo or the other thing that is quite common, the right guard ad as you go back. Yeah, you wanna keep that space in your third position. You just push your foot into the floor with as much strength as you have, and you go one, a two, a three, a four, again, six, seven, eight, to the side, two, closing front, a four, and side, closing back, arm up as you spring, two, a three, four, five, six, seven, guess what, back, two, and a three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, a spring, two, a three, four, spring, six, seven, now we go to the side, this is different, three, four, again, but with a straight leg, you push off the floor, five, six, lower, seven, eight, one, two, last time. 
time, and like we did last week, use those inner thighs, drag it in. Five, six, seven, eight, to finish. Two slow tondus front. Spring. Side, close front. Now back. Spring. To the back. Spring. This one's different. Side, lower. Off the floor. Spring. One more. Drag it in. Now I want to talk to you about this springing action of your foot. Because I say the word spring a lot, and that's exactly what I mean. It actually should feel like a jump. And the way we accomplish a jump is that you push down into the floor so that you take off in the opposite direction. However, whenever I give these at the bar, what's very common is that people just think of lifting it from here and then it becomes a lift rather than a reaction to just pushing down to the floor so much that your foot just comes off the floor. So the impetus for the movement comes from here going down as opposed to here lifting upwards. Tutanu's front. Spring arm up. Side, closing front. Now back, spring. Push. To the back. Side. Now push. Make sure you push all the way back to the bar. So our bain jeté exercise actually begins facing the bar. So I beg your pardon, I'm going to have my back to you for the beginning because it then does turn side onto the bar. So starting in first position, we go five and a six and seven, eight. I'm going to use my left leg so that when I turn around, I'll face you. However, you can start with your right leg. Seven, eight. We go one and a two, spring. Three and a four, like we just did. Five, a six, spring, seven and eight. Now, plie releve. Three, four, plie releve. Seven, eight, plie, releve. Three in total, lower down. Guess what, other foot. One, a two, three, four, a spring, six, seven, eight, a one, a two, three, four, and spring, six, seven, eight, plie, and up. Three, four, plie, and up. Seven, eight, three in total, lower down. Now you turn to face side onto the bar. So now we go seven, we've gone seven, eight. One, a two, plie. Five, a six, plie. Three in total, plie, tendu. And a close. And a back, a two, plie. And a back, two, plie. And a back, two, plie. And tendu. And a close to the front with an arm if you like. One, a two, you repeat it. Da ya, da 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 da. Da ya, da 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 da. Da ya, da da da. Ya, da 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 da. Or leave your own second. Ya, da 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 da. Ya, da 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 da. Da 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 da. To finish. So just one quick note before we start this exercise. I really want you to think about landing from a jump every time you come into the plie, or from this one, resisting 
into the floor. Yes, we don't just jump and then collapse. You want to try and defy the laws of physics and the laws of gravity and really slow down that descent as much as possible. We go into our releves. Land. Other leg. Turn. Land from a jump. Now with an arm if you want. So one quick note before we go on to the other side, especially when we're doing these to the front, this is where it's really likely to happen. You know when you're doing these, and we're closing on a plie. Again, I want to remind you in our plie exercise when I asked you to think about making sure that your hips aren't retracting backwards, the same thing happens here. We want to keep both sitting bones facing the floor and both hips nice and flat in the front. So you're just changing level like an elevator. Please, please, please don't let this become a sort of Saturday night fever sort of thing going on. Yeah, really nice, stable pelvis on the way down. But even that plie, don't collapse. Still feel like you're pulling upward. Other leg. Side on. Where are your sitting bones? Starting in first position, we got five, six, and seven, eight. Tendu front, on the door, two, and back, closing first again. Five, and six, and seven, and a eight. Three in total, one, and two. At the end of this one, I fake you out. A little trick, you go up one demi onto down to the side, and then a stretch over. Flex five over six on a plie and a eight to close. Then we reverse on the down, back and side and front, toe back again and back and side and front, toe back. The third one, remember, you fake the audience out. Watching. Then you go to the side, five, nice stretch, six, and seven, and close fifth now. So then we do our little rond de corps, a very small one, with an arm, forward, two, side. This should be nice and easy. Four, round the back, five, six, and seven, eight, we repeat again, one, and two, this time, try not to have your lunch repeat on you halfway around. Five, 
six, seven, or was it just me? Eight, could it be a balance? One, and two, balance, three, and four, and five. We're taking the bar just as much as you can. Try and inch your hand off. Eight, lift it to passe. See if you can hold the balance. One, and two, and three, and four, tendu five, and plie for a pose to finish. En Third time. Remember this is the fake out? Stretch it out. second side, I want to address another potential Saturday night at the club moment. Yes, what tends to happen sometimes is that when we do this rond de corps, it's almost like we don't realize that our hips are kind of moving in conjunction with what's happening. Now, I'm going to exaggerate to make a point, but sometimes I get this. as you come around. So it's like we have a big old, you know, disco moment at that time. Yeah, so remember it's just your upper back. So this, if I were to film sort of from the bottom of your ribs down, I shouldn't be able to tell that anything is going on up top. Yeah, sort of business down here, party up here, if you will. On the off. This is the fake out. Stretch it out. Pardon me, I'm too close to my bar. There we go. This is the fake out. So moving 
coming in to baton en fondue, starting in fifth position, we go five and six and seven and eight. Lift coup de pied, one and two. Now we do something a little unorthodox. You know I love my unorthodoxies. We turn in three and four, just a little parallel coup de pied. Turn out five and six, plie seven and eight. And one and two, turning in again. Three and four, turning out five and six and seven and eight. Close and back and two. Now we still have to bring it to that coup de pied beside our ankle, so just slide it there. Three and four, bring it back round to the back, wrap your ankle. Six and seven and eight. Now close one, plie two, chasse a la seconde, so to the side. Three and four, you're going to do the tiniest jump in second position. And five, find your balance, six, finish seven and eight. And I'm going to hang you out to dry in second position for a balance at the end to finish. Forget that and. And back. Slide around. Plie. Chasse à la seconde. Now, and five. Back. Now, I feel like I should acknowledge the fact that it's getting significantly darker in here. I feel like the storm clouds are coming in outside. Yes, so I apologize if all of a sudden I seem to be a little bit more in shadow. Yes, so for this exercise, uh, I want you to think a little bit about sort of what is happening when you're coming out of this turn in. So as we come out of this turn in moment, you're really thinking about getting that knee back, really rotating that femur. That's exactly the same thing that you want to feel going out into any of your fondues. Yet you don't want to have your hips sort of start to deviate towards whichever direction that leg is going. Yet it really wants to stay right inside your hip socket, just that femur barber pulling it around into the fondue. Turning in. Now think what your femur is doing in its hip socket. It stays there. We start in fifth position and we go five, a six, and seven, flex on eight. So we go frappe front and a very quick flex point, bring it in three and four and a two, frappe's front, a seven, eight, side one, 
up two and three up four five bring it front seven eight to the back one up two bring it in four and five six and seven eight one stay on a plie turn to the inside leg front for a little pose two a uh, three a uh, four five eight so, wow i went from five to eight six seven bring it in flex eight and then we reverse so it's frappe flex point and in four a uh, five two frappe seven eight Frappe, flex point, and bring it in, and a five, two, frappe, side, da, ya, da, 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 bring it in, frappe, six, seven, eight, one, and pose, hold, three, a, four, five, and pose, seven, eight, to finish. Flex, flex point, three. In, two to the front. Bring it in. Reverse. Now the challenging thing about this exercise is that very quick flex in point. Yes, yeah, so we want to imagine if you had a splint on either side of your ankle. So if I had, you know, sort of two pieces of wood or something going down both sides so that when I did that flex point, let's see how I go. So I point, flex, and then it goes right back to where it came from. Yeah, not doing this sickle in, or I can't really wing out. Or winging out. Yeah, it's really just a straight continuation of that shin bone. I think we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. If you imagine how that bony part at the front of your shin goes down, that just continues right through the joint of your second toe without going one way or the other way. And we apply that same logic when we're standing up on demi point. I do. Right, straight down both sides of that ankle. Close, inside leg. Reach it back. Flex, reverse. steroids. So we go to passe. One and two. Turn it in. Bring it right to the side of that knee. Four. Turn it out. Five and six. Put your arm, or your hand I should say, on your hip. Seven and eight. Devlape front. One and two. Hold three. Hold four. Plie pose. Five and six. Enjoy that. Seven and eight. We do the same thing to the side. Passe and two 
and in, and in, and five, and six, on your hip, seven, and eight, and double pace, extend it, two, hold three, hold four, plie again, enjoy it, six, now close and turn to face the bar, so same leg at the back, seven, and eight, we do the same thing, passe, two, turn it in as much as you can, I might have to cheat because of the curved back of my chair, and turn it out, six, now put your hand this time on your supporting hip. So the hip that you're standing on, right on that hip bone, because you're ensuring it faces towards the bar. One and two, hold three, hold four, and plie, six, and close, and eight. Now you step away from the bar and you have your little therapeutic stretch moment. Step away from the bar, one into parallel, take the leg that was just working and put it on top like a pretzel this way and plie back. This time you can stick your sitting bones back. And over three, just put your hands in the center of your chest. For those of you who do yoga, this would be figure four chair, depending on who you talk to. Five, six, seven, eight. And then you can just step onto that foot. One and two, and just let everything dangle down. Three, four, and then a slow roll up, vertebrae by vertebrae. Woo, head rush to finish. Turning in. Now hand on that hip, you're ensuring it doesn't go up. side, I really want you to take advantage of the fact that I've made you put your hand on your hip. Yeah, this is not just a, a decorative moment, although it certainly can be. You are actually wanting to sort of monitor what this hip is doing. Remember we talked about last week, you know, taking your hip with you or that deep back pocket rolling around. So if, you're, if your hand is on your hip, you will be able to notice more if something goes out of whack, or if the bowl that is your pelvis, you know, tips its liquid out on uh, the front or the back or either side. Yeah, so this is really a, a tool rather than just decoration. on your 
your supporting hip this time. Your car headlights stay facing the wall in front of you. Or one does, I should say. Stepping back, the leg you were just using crosses over. fifth position. Make sure you're a good distance from your bar. I tend to get closer and closer sometimes. So we go five and a six and seven and eight. Plie. One. Stay on a plie. You jeté to the front. Two and a three. Stretching. Four and grand ma and seven and eight. To the side, one, jeté, close front and stretch, four and five, closing front and seven and eight. Turn to face the bar, like we've been doing, same leg. One and jeté and three and four and a five and six and a seven and eight. Now we go side. One, jeté, plié three, relevé four. Now we go three relevés. And five, and six, and seven. Finish with a balance. Yes, yeah, so that's just a light spring touch up, touch up of your heels. And then we finish in second. Same thing to the side, stay on the same level. Same leg. exercise and before we do the side and the back we have this plie and then we have the very strong jeté brush on a plie and what I really want everyone to think about is kind of the same thing that I was talking about much earlier on in the bar when we were pressing down into the floor to spring our foot the same logic applies here yet you don't jeté by lifting from here I brush down into the floor if there was no music you should be able to hear it you should be able to hear it on the way out as it really brushes down into the floor because this is what's very important in grand battement. I think I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. If you imagine you have a shovel on the bottom of your foot, you're trying to dig a trench down into the floor as you bring your leg up. And this helps us for so many multitudes of steps, glissade, assemblé. Yes, if those are things that you've done in the past, so you really want to think about this brush as we go to the other side. Two grab up on front. To the side. Did you hear your brush? We 
have a little center exercise, which is a little bit of a jump, actually. We have a two very small jumps at the end. So this exercise will actually start in second position, hopefully if you can you know, stand on two legs like I seem to be incapable of doing right now. We go five, six, seven, eight. Prepare our arms to second. Now we plie one, and like we were doing at the bar, you push off your right leg towards the left. Two, lower, three, four. Repeat, five, six, lower, seven, eight. And one, left, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight. Now both together, but without a jump, just a releve. One, and two, lower, three, four, and five, and six, lower, seven. Now with a jump. One, and two, three, four, five, and six. And we'll finish in first, just to give it a little button on the end. So you can either leave your arms in second like I just did, or if you're feeling really good about life today, you can take same arm as leg that's doing the gesture. So you can go one, two, lower down, five, turn, lower down, yap ba ba, yap ba ba, then just I would leave it in the center, yap ba ba, yeah, and jump, yeah, and jump. Just to give it a little bit of style if you feel comfortable changing your focus, because that actually makes it much harder to stay on balance. Yes, if you pick that one point of focus out at the front, it's a little bit easier to balance than it is to change it, but do what you feel comfortable with. I'll do it with the arms this time. Other leg. Woo! Releve. With a jump. So as we've done before in the center, that exercise actually does both sides. So feel free to rewind and do it again if you want to think about the following thing. I actually didn't do this very well because I noticed I was falling over. When you do your plie, I plie here. When I push, I have to make sure I push myself all the way with my weight over that leg so if I asked you to stop, there we go, it's much easier to stop. Yes, you don't want to get into sort of this position where you haven't quite made it. I mean, you're still getting the push off the foot, but you have to really think a nice, strong push the same way you will, like you jump a very strong push in both legs to get you in the air. So to finish, we are going to dive a little bit into the realm of pirouettes. Now, I want to stress to you, if you're doing this on a yoga mat, you might find this very difficult because it might be a little bit too sticky. So you want to be on a surface that you can at least turn on a little bit safely. We're only doing up to half turns, so don't worry about it too much. But the most important thing is that it's a surface that you can turn on without turning wildly off in many directions. Yes, so I want you to also really be careful about what's around you, yes. Things like this, well, who am I kidding? It's from Ikea. But you know, things that you might knock over should things go awry, yes? So we start in parallel for this exercise. We go five, six, and seven, eight. Plie one, coup de pied. Two, lower, three, and four. Foot and arms together, five, six, and seven, eight, same leg, you do a half turn on the off to face away. One and half turn, three and four, five and half turn, seven, eight. Other side, that's all. One, two, three, three, four, twice without a turn, seven, eight, one, half turn, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I just want to give you a quick reminder 
about your head. So if you've done any kind of turning before, or even if you've done a preparation for turn exercise, you will know that we have to do what I call the L'Oreal commercial. Yes, so you're turning this way. I wish I had long hair, I just buzzed it all off, so I, this does not have nearly the effect that I wanted it to. But you're going this way, and you're looking right here, and then you have your L'Oreal or Pantene moment whew, to go to the other side. And if you had lots of hair, it would do that lovely, you know, shampoo commercial effect as you come around. Yes, so we're looking here, and then you bring it round as fast as possible. I mean, we're not doing a whole turn, but the same logic applies. The first thing that should get there should be my eyes. Plie, coup de pied. So that is all the time we have today for episode six. Thank you for joining me in my quickly darkening living room to do a little bit of ballet. Uh, this coming Thursday, you have another wonderful intermediate ballet class, so please check that out if intermediate is a little bit up your street. Uh, and also, we have a multitude of very exciting things coming in the next few weeks from Canada's National Ballet School. So I hope that you will keep your ear to the ground and listen out for those things. I think you're gonna be really excited by some of the material that we are going to be bringing you. So that's all from me for this week. Again, thank you so, so much. And if you want any more information about the various programs that Canada's National Ballet School does, please, please, please head on to their website at nbs-enb.ca and find out a multitude of things that we're doing and also how you might be able to give us a hand in this difficult time right now. So again, thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you for episode seven. Have a wonderful day, evening, morning, whatever time of day you're doing this. Have a great one.